DLF April ADP is finally out. So let's take a look at four guys whose ADPs just don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Just getting into it right away. The first guy on my list is Dak Prescott. He's coming off the board as QB 12. And honestly, that's too low. It's, it's just not where it should be given the last four years, five years we've seen of Dak Prescott. I think at this point, the narrative around like his actual NFL ability to win games, to win big games in the playoffs, that's starting to push Dak Prescott down. Because when you just look at the production, QB 12 doesn't make sense, right? Dak Prescott is only 30 years old. And when you go season by season, what has he done in terms of points per game? Well, in 2020, he finishes as the QB one in points per game. Yes, he played five games, but it was a really damn good stretch of five games. Comes back in 2021, finishes as the QB seven in points per game. 2022, he is the QB 10 in points per game. And then just in 2023, where he led the NFL in passing touchdowns, he finished as QB two in points per game. Those finishes are not the type of finishes you see for a guy going as QB 12. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. The situation itself hasn't changed. It hasn't really gotten worse. They got rid of Michael Gallup, but who, who gives a shit? I mean, you have CeeDee Lamb. You have Brandon Cooks, even at 30 years old, is a good wide receiver too. And then you have Jake Ferguson as well. And honestly, knowing how the Cowboys operate, I would not rule them out drafting another rookie wide receiver on day one or day two. Like that is very much a Jerry Jones move to make right now. There is just a stable situation with a hyper talented quarterback for fantasy. And he's just not valued appropriately, right? There's three guys going ahead of him that I think he has a really good case to you know, be taken ahead of. The first is Jordan Love. Again, I think they're going to end up being very similar year to year for production, but Dak Prescott has the track record. Jordan Love does not have that. So if I'm just opting on the side of caution for the next three years, I will take Dak Prescott. I think, again, Jordan Love has earned the right to be taken as a QB1. I'm still going to go with Dak. You also have Kyler Murray. Again, I love Kyler, but there's questions about how sustainable the rushing is going to be. Is he a good enough passer with Marvin Harrison Jr., you know, hopefully, to finish back where he used to finish, right, as a top five guy consistently? And then the other one's Caleb Williams. Look, I hope to God Caleb Williams is a superstar. But if you're telling me I can flip Caleb Williams for a top 10 quarterback plus, I'm probably going to do that. So when you're looking at ADP like Dak Prescott at QB12, I just, I don't really get that right now. Moving to the running back position, we have Javante Williams off the board as RB15. And honestly, I, I truly do not get this one. It just feels like people are clinging on to the hope of what we thought rookie Javante Williams was going to be. that That's what this is. And at least that's how it feels to me. RB15 is far too high for somebody that has really not given us much on the field, right? You have three seasons of Javante Williams, really two and a half, two and a quarter. 2021, he's the RB26 in points per game, right? Melvin Gordon's there, fine. Okay, well, 2022, it's his backfield. He plays four games, RB30 in points per game. Okay, well, now 2023, he's healthy. It is his backfield. There's nothing anybody can do about it. All right, RB33 in points per game. You have not seen, or we have not seen what we wanted to from Javante Williams. And year two, post-injury, I think may be his best season. But what does he have to do to return value? He has to, in a likely bottom 10 offense, finish as a top 15 running back maybe higher to really return the value because realistically, I think he's going to drop in value next year. There's really just not a path. He's in the last year of his contract. He's going to hit free agency. He's likely not getting a workhorse role or an extension in Denver. So when you look at this, it's just a culmination of a guy that just feels like he's on the precipice of a cliff value and taking a player like that at RB 15 in a startup is just far too much risk especially if you're just looking for volume for, you know, one to two years. DeAndre Swift is cheaper. Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, Joe Mixon, all of them have a chance to even outscore him just this year, let alone in 2025. So Javante at RB15 is just, it's one of those things where the hype has been around for so long that people are just clinging on. I think there's going to be one or two guys in every every league that are going to be comfortable taking him at this price. It should not be you. Moving to the wide receiver position, I'm looking at T. Higgins going off the board as wide receiver 25 right now. And 
look, T. Higgins is not a wide receiver three. And yes, technically wide receiver 25 is as close as you can get to being you know, a wide receiver three or a wide receiver two. But T. Higgins is better than that. Just on pure talent, I think T. Higgins is better than that. Over his career, right? He averaged 12.2 points per game as a rookie. Obviously, Joe Burrow does not play that full season. Higgins, also a rookie. He puts up a 19% target share with that as well, which is extremely encouraging. Year two, 2021, puts up 15.7 points per game, puts up a 23.9% target share. That's the, that's the T. Higgins I have in my mind. 2022, he leaves four games or three games early, excuse me, playing less than a quarter of football and then also has a game canceled because of the DeMar Hamlin situation. If we remove those, right, where he's actually on the field, he averaged 15.9 points per game. The talent is there, right? It's not that we haven't seen it in two years. The numbers are dramatically skewed in his third season. And then in 2023, look, 11.3 points per game and 18% target share. And the health issues popped up again. That's the reason he had such, or at least it seems like he had such a terrible, terrible season. He was active for 12 games. He played eight of them, like a full complement of snaps, and again, really wasn't right for the majority of the season. I think when you're betting on guys or thinking they're going to get hurt, that's the perfect time to buy low because once somebody gets deemed injury prone, there are people that hold on to that forever, right? There are still people that tell me Keenan Allen is injury prone. Prior to last year, he was one of the healthier players for like half a decade. Guys are injury prone until they aren't. The same may be true with T. Higgins. There's no way to really know. We can look back in a year, two years, see if we're correct. But I think just when you're betting on talent, T. Higgins is the perfect kind of buy low player. There's guys going ahead of him, right? Devontae Adams, 31 years old, on the decline. We'll talk about him in a second. You have DK Metcalf, who really has not produced to the level of T. Higgins, and it hasn't been you know, health related. It's just been production related, unfortunately. It's a very busy room, wide receiver room for DK as well next year. And then you have Zay Flowers. Look, I love Zay. I think he's a very good wide receiver. He is tied to Lamar Jackson, who has never, ever supported a high-end wide receiver. And yes, I am a talent over situation guy. I think T. Higgins is better than Zay Flowers. I think he's in a better situation. That is going to push Zay down just a little bit. So when you're looking at T., there's a path for him to get inside of the top 20 almost. And I think wide receiver 25 does not do him justice. On to our last wide receiver. I just mentioned him. It is Devontae Adams off the board as wide receiver 24. That may not sound crazy for a guy that is 31 years old, going to be 32 this season. But Devontae Adams is on the decline. There is simply no denying it at this point in his career. We have four years of data where he is just slipping down the list in terms of production. And look, that happens when you get over 30. The like father time is undefeated and Devontae Adams is going to be no different no matter how good he used to be. When you look at 2020, 25.6 points per game. Superstar, immaculate, unbelievable wide receiver. 2021, okay. 21.5 points per game. Still really damn good. Okay, 2022. 19.7 points per game. Okay. All right, he's outside of the 20 mark. Fine. This season, big drop off to 15.6 points per game. Do we really expect a high-end wide receiver like Devontae Adams to deliver on that wide, rec wide receiver 24 value? I don't know if I do. Like, I think it's a bigger question than it should be. And that alone is enough for me to just push him down my board. I don't want to take a guy that, one, could fall off a cliff as a wide receiver, two, and then two, I don't want to take a guy that's never going to gain value. Like, I just, I cannot get on board with that. T. Higgins is right behind him. Even if T. Higgins doesn't necessarily, you know, turn back into, you know, the T. Higgins of old, he's 25, 26 years old. There's plenty of time for T. Higgins to turn it around. Devonta Adams has a year or two left at most. You know, maybe he's Larry Fitzgerald. Probably not, though. And when you're drafting a player at his age, you can just kind of look at the next season as the marker because that's what matters when you're playing that win now mode, right? You're not drafting Devonte Adams as a, you know, rebuilding piece, as a retooling piece. You're drafting him because you're trying to win a title. I don't know if he truly helps you do that at the current price. So if you're looking for veterans, there's guys better behind Devonte Adams, at least for 2024. I think Mike Evans, first of all, off the board is wide receiver, what, 35 here? That's a no brainer. And then you have Keenan Allen going off, you know, wide receiver 47, 48 range.
Keenan Allen will also have a rookie quarterback, but Caleb Williams is a hell of a lot better than Michael Penix or Alex O'Connell. And Keenan Allen outscored Devonta Adams last year. So there's all of these pieces that are just, look, Devonta Adams is not the win now wide receiver you should be chasing. There are better options that are a whole lot cheaper in your startups.